I'm Jamie McDonald. Join me as we celebrate small businesses that make New York so unique. These New York Originals. Like any true New Yorker, there's a little building in Soho that keeps redefining itself. It's been a speakeasy, gambling parlor, even a brothel, all under the shadow of its neighbor, the old police headquarters. Today, it's a hip bistro called O'Neill's. Right around the turn of the century, it must have been great with the police and the gangsters and the politicians and high society all mixing down here. And in the middle of it all would have been this building, 174 Grand Street. Since anyone can remember, this has always been a tavern, among other things. Yeah, it was hidden in plain sight as a speakeasy and gambling, of course. And of course, the prostitution, everybody knew about it and they were participating in it. So it was one of those protected, they had friends in high places, let's just put it that way. Those friends in high places were probably right across the street, which was at the time the New York City Police Headquarters. This was built as a tavern, the whole building, in 1875, and this was called the newsroom. Um, it was a tavern, and it was predominantly uh, serving the press, who on a daily basis was covering police headquarters. For years, reporters would sit at these windows, hoping to spot the next bigwig getting booked. Criminals like John Dillinger and Al Capone, among others. A few of them might have used one of the building's more unusual features, an underground tunnel to police headquarters. Officially, it was used for transporting criminals to nearby stables, but no one disputes it was also used for more recreational matters. Now bricked up, the tunnel makes a great wine cellar. Right now we're standing under the sidewalk, under the front door, and this, if you make a left, would go across the street next door to the police headquarters commissioner's building. So it's sealed, it's sealed heading north, and then left would be west. So supposedly people would sneak in police officers? Well, yeah. You know, the combination of a brothel upstairs and a tunnel going to the police headquarters is, is a tricky one for me to, to uh, figure out. On the second and third floors where the prostitutes were, the windows were very ornate and they were large. They were larger than usual for just a regular residence and that's because the women would sit in the windows sort of as display. Decades came and went on Grand Street. Then in 1973, the police department moved uptown and the former headquarters was converted into luxury condos. As for the tavern, it lingered on for a few decades in different incarnations. Then in 1994, restaurateur Chris O'Neill came in and completely reinvented the space. The first order of business, restoring the building's famed carved wood ceiling. This ceiling was brought to this building in 1875 and it was reinstalled here could be much, much older than that even, but it was in almost perfect condition. It's mahogany and walnut predominantly, and uh, just a little bit of oak. Um, and it dominated the space so much, my architect, Kate Webb, decided that we were gonna just work with that. We did kind of an Edward Hopper kind of a bar. I'm glad we did it. Uh, I like the feel of it. It feels like a hideaway which may have been advantageous for some of his clientele. Salman Rushdie was coming in quite a bit, and he, he, had what, he had that fatwa. And I said, well, you can have any table you want. I mean, do you like this table? He said, he said yes. And when he sat, I was walking away, and I thought, oh my goodness, I put him right in the window. Maybe that's uncomfortable. So I go back, and I said, Mr. Rushdie, don't worry. I'm advertising, and people can't find me down here. But they did find him, and for good reason, the food. I think it pleasantly surprises people. We're progressive American, and then given the chef talent that I have coming through at the time, if, if I have a chef who has a French uh, background, I will let him do, you know, three or four items that are, you know, representative of his cooking, and then keep our standard pieces. 
O'Neill's ambiance and cuisine caught the producer's eyes of Sex in the City, who ended up filming several episodes here. Yeah, we've been lucky. Uh, the Sex in the City came through them having parties here. They just turned around and, and put us in the show. We, they made this scout. We were very, uh, we were very lucky. They were a great production. Bus tours now come in daily, bringing in fans. And just like the girls, they have a Cosmo. Movie stardom aside, Chris would like O'Neill's to be best known for one thing. Reliability. I would like to be, go down as the most reliable place <laughs> in New York. I think that's the most important thing. So I think what we try to do is kick up on our food a little bit. People don't expect, um, I think, the level of tastiness that we've we provided. Uh, the food is always, I think it pleasantly surprises people. O'Neill's is available for private parties and events, and they've recently opened a new location in Hoboken, New Jersey.